Hey, this is Kenny Moran, and welcome to Mobile Sessions, the premier mobile recording studio in Los Angeles. I'm out here in a park somewhere, and I'm going to get ready and do our tip of the week number two, which is going to be Avid Pro Tools MIDI Basics 102. I'm going to do a few more advanced things this week so you can see them. So I'm just going to jump right in because this is kind of where we left off in, in 101. So I got battery up here, and you can see that uh, I have a couple of... Uh, clips. This is a clip. This is a second clip. I'm just going to delete that clip. Just using delete on your keyboard can delete anything that's there. Uh, standard Mac, you know, Apple Z, Command Z can uh, bring anything back. So if we're looking at our clip here, I'm going to show you a feature in Pro Tools that's been here since um, Pro Tools 8. And it uh, people in Logic will know it as uh, Split Demix. It's been here in Pro Tools for a long time long time like probably around i don't know when is that about 2009 2008 i mean a long time but it's one of those things that a lot of people don't know exists so if you just click on the clip and then right click it you have all these things that you can do that pertain to that clip so i'm going to come down to event operations since we're dealing with midi midi is uh referred to as events and I'm pretty sure almost every DAW refers to MIDI as an event. So if we come down here, you'll see I can quantize it, change the velocity, change the duration of the notes within the clip, transpose the clip, uh, select split notes, and that's what we're talking about, split to mix. I can input quantize, so this is quantize after. This is having a quantization set before you want to play. Um, step input, restore the performance or flatten the performance. Restore the performance is a lot of times we'll be working on a particular kind of groove and we think we're right there and all of a sudden it doesn't work and you know it really gets messed up in terms of quantizing. You can restore the performance right back to as you recorded it. So very cool. So let's take a look at the select split notes and this menu window. I'm going to move it around so you can see what I'm looking at. We can go in here, we have the pitch criteria, other criteria, and then the action. Um, it's really powerful. Um, but I'm gonna do what 99% of the time all of us wanted to is I wanna hit all notes, okay? And if it's note between, it'll say note between C2, C3. Well, that can be really, really helpful for say the composer who's, who uh, was playing a string part down but playing it like a piano part, but knowing full well that the violins were in the upper register, the violas were in the middle register, and the cellos were towards the uh, uh, middle bass register, if you will. So if I know that the, you know, the violins are between C2 and C3 per se, then it'll grab everything out of this and put it to a new track between those notes. So that's what it means by notes between, and then you, you uh, select, right? And you can do that top of a chord, bottom of a chord. But for us, 99% of the time, it's going to be all notes. Come down here, there's other things you can do. You can say, hey, all notes, but I want you to only take notes that are between this velocity and that velocity. Sometimes you'll have like a ghost note, something like that, especially like on a snare drum or something, and you want to put it on its own track. Well, I can say grab velocity between one and say 35, because I know that's how soft I played, you know, relatively speaking, and I can split it out that way. Most importantly, we come down to the action section. You can select notes, split notes, cut, and clipboard. So split notes, all notes, split notes, and I'm gonna say cut them to the clipboard, a new track, or a new track per pitch. So if it goes to the clipboard, essentially, it'll take all the notes, cut them out separately, and save them in the clipboard where you can paste them into something you want. That may be helpful. A new track means it'll take every single note you played, every event, and put those on a new track. Not necessarily that helpful um, in a regular basis. I could see, you know, there could be a particular thing you wanted to do, but let's just say we did a drum program. In this case, we had a kick, we had a snare, we had a hi-hat, right? We know that it was probably C1, D1, and like F sharp one, something like that, right? If I do new track per pitch, it'll make me a new track just for those particular notes on the pitch. 
So 99% of the time, it's gonna be all notes. I'm not really gonna have another an other criteria and I'm gonna have an action of cut, a new track for pitch. And if I hit apply, if you look right over here at the clip, as soon as I hit apply, boom. There's all the new tracks from the original. So I'm just gonna make these a little bigger for a second. Look at that. And if I play that a second, you can see, right? Now, if I undo that, the original one will come back and you'll still have these. So sometimes it's kind of weird that when you undo it, it won't undo all those tracks it made, but it will undo or bring back the original clip in addition to the splits. I like to do that just to keep it around and then I mute it. Um, I never know when I want that original thing for who knows what reason. How did I do a quick mute? I, I just hit the clip, Command M, and I could mute that and unmute that all day. 